here for you. Fox 4 News starts now. Hello, I'm Dan Godwin with a look at what's making news in North Texas. Mesquite police released video of a deadly officer involved shooting from last week. The video starts off by showing two cars driving on Cartwright Road early on December 14th. Behind them is a Mesquite PD patrol car. The two turn into a 7-Eleven and the officer keeps driving. Moments later, a call comes in and someone tells police their silver Hyundai was just stolen. One of the vehicles the patrol car was following. The officer turns around and pulls into the 7-Eleven. Two suspects walk outside of the store and run once they see the officer. So he turns his attention to the driver of the other car, 19-year-old Peyton Lawrence. The car is put in reverse and you can hear the officer telling the man to stop moving the car. When it gets put back in drive, the officer fires three rounds, killing Lawrence. A criminologist believes this shooting was justified, while the attorney representing the Lawrence family says the opposite. Now, if the person would have backed away from the officer, in other words, if the person would have put the car in reverse and just backed off, the officer would not have been justified in using a gun. However, when the officer sees that this individual is shifting, in other words, the car is coming towards the officer, at that point, the officer has to rely on the premise of whether or not the officer's life and the life of others would have been compromised by that person. Inside the vehicle after the shooting, Lawrence had an outstanding aggravated assault warrant at the time. Mesquite PD has not released the name of the officer involved, only that he's a 17-year veteran. The department is investigating the shooting. After that, the Dallas County DA's office will investigate as well. One person was killed when the truck they were driving crashed into a vacant duplex in South Fort Worth. Happened around 8.30 last night at McCart Avenue and West Drew Street. The truck caught fire after hitting the duplex. The name of the driver has not been released. The Tarrant Appraisal District named a new chief appraiser. John Don Bobbitt will take over the role in February. He worked in the same position in McLennan County in central Texas. Bobbitt says he is looking forward to restoring public trust. The appointment comes after the board faced several public controversies and a recent security breach. Former chief appraiser Jeff Law resigned in September following votes of no confidence from city councils in Keller, South Lake, and Colleyville and from Tarrant County commissioners. The mission of the appraisal district to provide accurate valuations of property for tax purposes. The Cowboys are hoping to finally beat a winning team on the road this weekend as they take on the Miami Dolphins. That's not going to be easy as Dallas deals with several injuries on both sides of the ball. Offensive line guards Zach Martin and Tyron Smith are both hurt. Martin will miss the game and Smith has not practiced all week. Defensive tackle Jonathan Hankins will likely skip the game too as he's dealing with an ankle injury. Dallas has struggled away from home all season long. They are three and four on the season. Quarterback Dak Prescott says he doesn't know why the team is much less effective on the road. I don't know if there's anything concrete honestly. Um, a lot of different aspects that go hand in hand or uh, that, that go together different things you could say maybe it's this maybe it's that at the end of the day type of guy I am conversations we had they're all going to be excuses we just got to come out with the energy maintain it throughout the game regardless of the score regardless of we're down here's your Christmas Eve NFL schedule on Fox 4 first it's an NFC North matchup the Detroit Lions face the Minnesota Vikings at noon then at 325, the Cowboys take on the Miami Dolphins. We'll have a complete recap on free-for-all that night. 
A North Texas teen who received a bone marrow transplant may be released from the hospital next month. 14-year-old Pike Peterson was diagnosed with leukemia in July. Good Day shared his story as he searched for a genetic match willing to donate blood stem cells. Chip Wagner, who once taught Pike's Sunday school class, joined the donor registry and demonstrated how that process works. Pike's match turned out to be Pike's brother. He underwent the transplant earlier this month. The family continues to lean on their faith as Pike's recovery continues. You know, the God that's uh, uh, with us on the mountaintop is the same God that's with us in the valley. So we're just grateful this Christmas season that uh, we get to celebrate that. The donor drive held for Pike also helped three other patients find a match. Anyone between 18 and 55 years old can register to be a donor. If you're interested, we have the information at our website, fox4news.com. It was a morning of emotion for parents and excitement for their children. The Love Field area students received a pretty big surprise today as they begin their holiday break. The students of Dallas ISD's Thomas J. Rusk Elementary School were treated to gifts courtesy of Southwest Airlines, which of course is based at Love Field. Holiday meals are headed to North Texas homes ahead of Christmas. I'm TC Wizinga with a look at the impact next. And the showers have moved out today, but more rain is on the way as we head into the holiday weekend. I will time out your Christmas Eve forecast for the first half of the day and take a look at Christmas Day. That's all coming up next. Hundreds of people lined up in Plano for a big holiday giveaway. And once inside, they got to enjoy a Christmas shopping extravaganza free of charge. Minnie's food pantry was packed with toys and goodies for kids of all ages. And it wasn't just toys. Minnie's also provided meals for families, all to make this holiday bright for those in need. This year, Minnie's food pantry provided for nearly 400 families. Well, cooks were up early in Dallas this morning, preparing a holiday feast for homebound seniors and disabled adults throughout the county. Each year, the Meals on Wheels Christmas delivery is an impressive display of logistics and planning made possible by some enthusiastic volunteers, making sure the meals get where they are supposed to go. Fox 4's Tizia Muzinga has more. Hundreds of volunteers have showed up for Christmas meals on wheels, and many of them have been helping out every year. Organizers say they are expecting more than 900 volunteers to help deliver meals for families in need. More than 4,800 families and homebound seniors will be greeted with traditional Christmas meals and also a festive bag filled with toiletry items like socks and shampoo. But organizers say it's more than just the food and gifts. It's also about the companionships built over the years. Like it's just great to see, you know, the joy in their faces and knowing that, you know, there's uh, people to, to help them out. Families can expect turkey, dressing, and mixed vegetables, and it's not hard to get involved as well. You can become a volunteer or donate for the cause. It costs just seven bucks for just one meal. We have all that information on our website at fox4news.com. TC Muzinga, Fox 4 News. Well, it was a pretty mild start out there this morning with temperatures only falling into the mid 50s across the immediate metroplex. A little bit warmer out west, a little bit cooler out east as we stayed locked in the cloud cover. Now, through the rest of the afternoon, I do think we continue to see clouds clear out from the west to the east. I do think, though, that our far eastern counties will likely be looking at additional clouds, preventing us from climbing too much through the afternoon. Out west, though, wouldn't be surprised if a couple of spots hit the 70 degree mark. Most of us will top out in the upper 60s today and tomorrow and check out that average high 57 degrees. We will be a solid 10 degrees above that over the next couple of days. This is even after showers and storms move through through the first half of the day on Christmas Eve. I still think we're able to top out in the upper 60s to about 70 degrees. But then 
Yeah, it's mild until it's not. That strong cold front looks to arrive Sunday evening, Sunday night, which means our Christmas Day forecast much more seasonable with highs back to normal for late December. Satellite and radar over the last six hours. I'm showing you this on loop to show you the progression of showers moving in through the very early morning hours, eventually exiting off to the east. And now the rest of our Friday will stay dry. Things do start to change tomorrow morning, and I'll talk about that in just a second. Our rainfall totals from the last 24 hours. Yeah, so yesterday morning we woke up to those patchy showers that became more numerous in coverage, especially through the second half of the day. But rain showers were fairly light in nature, which means we didn't pick up too much in the way of those rainfall totals, even though it was raining off and on pretty much all day Thursday and continuing into the nighttime hours. Most of North Texas on average saw about a half inch of rain, upwards of about an inch of rain over the last 24 hours. Now, with our next system on the way, by the time that's all said and done, I expect a good chunk of North Texas to pick up an additional one to upwards of three inches of rain by the time those storms move out. So our temperature cast later this afternoon, I'm climbing into the upper 60s for most couple spots out west could hit 70 degrees as earlier clearing of that cloud cover looks likely. So our weather pattern stays fairly active over the next few days. Tomorrow morning, we're going to be waking up to some patchy drizzle, a couple of light showers. Showers become a little bit more numerous through the second half of the day. And then by Saturday night, throughout the first half of the day on Sunday, widespread showers and thunderstorms return to the forecast. Now that severe weather threat, very low. But the heaviest storms could produce fairly heavy rainfall with the potential for that localized flooding heading into early Sunday morning. Then a cold front drops through and we fall back to normal as we head into your Christmas day. So our future cast by tomorrow morning, most of us waking up to that cloud cover. Low clouds will move back in overnight tonight. A few spotty showers as well as that patchy drizzle will continue through the first half of the day tomorrow. And then tomorrow evening, tomorrow night, we're going to be watching a complex of storms out west that will continue to inch a little bit closer. I think by midnight into the very early morning hours, we're looking at a fairly high coverage rain and thunderstorm event. And as far as our forecast rainfall totals are concerned, again, before those showers and thunderstorms exit by Sunday evening, they move off to the east. We could tack on an additional one to three inches of rain, especially the farther north and east that you live. So a tale of two forecasts this holiday weekend. Tomorrow, cloudy upper 60s. Storms move in at night and then exit by about midday on Christmas Eve before temperatures soar to about 70 degrees. Then that front arrives Christmas Day on your forewarn seven day forecast. Windy, chilly with highs only in the mid 50s. Now, the final few days of 2023 also look to stay quiet, climbing into the upper 50s to about 60 degrees by Thursday. All right, thanks, Kylie. And that's a look at what's making news in North Texas. Of course, for news anytime, go to fox4news.com.